Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is going to be called Contest of Champions Battle Realm. It's by Marvel, Upper Deck, and Kabam. The game is for 3 to 6 players, takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play, and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game, you're going to be choosing one of Marvel's superheroes. You can choose the Falcon, Iron Man, Ant-Man, Vision, so on and so forth, basically from those favorite movies that have been coming out lately. And you're going to be then selecting a standee, and some of them come with one, others come with two. There's different locations, and then you get a bunch of die. This game works similar to games like Yahtzee and King of New York, in which you're going to be re-rolling die and trying to match die equal to your character's ability cards. Every character is going to get four of their ability cards, and you have this nice big deck of cards here, which you're going to give out four to each player that selected their certain heroes. And as they roll, they're going to be matching these symbols. Some symbols uh, are going to be locked, and you can't re-roll them. Other ones are going to allow you to do things like move, do a range attack, a melee attack, as well as a wild and um also, the other two do some special stuff, too, which I'll talk about below. The objective is, though, to destroy your opponents. You're going to have PvP points, which are basically going to be health as well as victory points. If you can hit 21 PvP points, you're going to win the game. Or if you can eliminate everybody else to zero PvP points, you also win. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. Here are the contents for Marvel's Contest of Champions Battle Realm. As you can see, there is a plenty of different figures and standees, along with all of their own unique character boards here. The character board is going to actually come with the characters name, starting health in red, and as you can see the rest are in black, as well as their special abilities, which are down here. He's elusive, flight, and, has, and is gifted. That's the Falcon here. And it'll tell you on your player reference cards here what they do. You've got your Falcon's wing ability, which is a passive that happens forever, as well as some flavor text, and there's a ton of these different characters. Each character is also going to get a set of four different cards. As you can see, here's four Guillotine, here's four Iron Man, here's four Thor, four Captain America, so on and so forth, all the way down the list here. You're also going to have six die and these are all the different sides represented on the die here and let's go ahead and talk about them really quick the first one here is the mutant uh, roll which basically is a locked die and once you've gotten three of them you might have to end up going onto the crystal prison unless something else says otherwise uh, getting three of these guys puts you on here and you're not going to be able to escape it unless you roll triples this one here if you roll uh, this one it gets locked as well it's called science and if you get three or more you're going to start doing damage to everyone on your location Locations are these things here, and you have a whole big stack of cards that are going to represent the locations in the game, and I'll explain that during setup in a second here. But after three, for every single one of these you get additional, it's going to do one damage to every single player. So at three it's one, at four of these it's two damage to everybody, and at uh, five it's uh, three damage to everybody. This is the only way you're going to actually be able to do damage to yourself in the game, so be very careful with that. You've got the melee punching red, you've got the blue ranged attack, which means you can attack somebody else not in your space, and you've got this blue blue here that is a movement die. Uh, it's going to let you move uh, to any, uh, any location you want on the board that isn't the one you're currently on. Uh, this one over here is a wild, which basically lets you choose any color or, or, of die you want. Uh, over here are all the different standees, and of course all of them just come with one unique standee, except for this guy here. He comes with two, because his card has special abilities for him. You're also going to notice these are all the different locations, as well as over here are going to be all the different player aids. And when you start the game, you're simply going to select three players. I'll go ahead and just remove these guys here and we'll simply be using Captain America, the Hulk, and Iron Man. You can play from three to six players, but we'll just do three for right now. Let's go ahead and first select Captain uh, America. Let's see if I can find him. There he is. Then let's go ahead and select Iron Man. Uh, where are you, Iron Man? There you are. And then let's also go ahead and select the Hulk. The Hulk is right here. These are also not gonna be needed, so we're gonna remove them as well after you've selected those. You're also then going to go through the decks to find the correct cards that are gonna reference these guys here. Hulk, uh, here's Iron Man right here. And then we need Captain America right here. And there's the Hulk right here. The rest of these cards aren't needed either. We'll move these this cards aside along with these. The Crystal Prison will always start in the middle. You're going to shuffle this deck of locations up and then deal out X, um, which is number of players, plus one. So in this instance, it'll be four different locations. And everybody is going to get one of these player reference cards. So we'll go ahead and select these three here, moving the rest aside. These locations are just going to go around the Crystal prison in any way you so choose to do so. I'll put it just like this though to make it nice and easy. I'll put Captain over here. We'll put Iron Man and then we'll go ahead and have Mr. Hulk right over here. And then we're going to go ahead and give them their ability cards. So here's Hulk's ability cards. And then we've got Captain America's ability cards. And then we also have Iron Man's. Let's go ahead and select them right there. 
All right, and then of course, give them the boards. Make sure that they are on the correct health spot so that it's in red. The Hulk only has seven health. And Iron Man, he also only has seven. And I think Captain America has a little more, but I could be wrong. Let's go ahead and find out here. He's got eight, so he's got a little bit more. Okay, now in turn order, players are going to go ahead and select where they want to go onto the board here. And the boards get some interesting aspects as well. On the top left hand corner is the amount of uh, victory points or PvP points you're going to gain when you move onto that space, as well as what happens when you're on that location. This one says heroes in this specific area. Reroll any single die results and additional time, and including the locked dies. So these actually can stop the uh, dies from being locked. This one over here from the Dimensional Rift says heroes in the Dimensional Rift add an additional movement to their role. Pretty sweet. So if Captain went first, he could place here. Maybe Iron Man would go here, and then the Hulk would be placed here. The only time you're going to go to the Crystal Prison, like I said before, is if you roll three of these mutant die here, and you can go there, which is not good. You don't want to go there. These cards over here are going to represent the different uh, types of die you're going to need to roll in order to be able to use the abilities here. So as you can see, uh, for to use this one, the Billion Dollar Punch from Iron Man, you're going to actually have to have this and these two. So the locked dies are going to be beneficial for you as well, just you can't re-roll them. Like in Yahtzee, though, you'll be able to re-roll die if you want to. So to start off, we'll go ahead and have Captain go ahead and start. He's going to roll his die and he can keep whatever he wants. Remember, it's useful to, because he can actually go ahead and start moving around the board to collect uh, these PVP points. They're gonna help him out. Or maybe he doesn't want that many, maybe he only wants a certain amount, so he can go ahead and take these guys here. Here, we gonna leave a ranged die here. Uh, maybe that as well, we'll re roll these two, and re roll one more time. Okay, so that is gonna be the end of his rolling. He can then select if he wants to use these individually. So I'll simply moving twice, a ranged, a melee, and then these guys here are just locked die. Or if he wants, he can actually put them, attach them to cards and have them do specific things. For instance, if he wanted to do American Justice, he'd put these guys here. And it says Captain America may move to any location and then do a three damage strike to all heroes there. He must then move to a different location. So he could go, well, bam, over, over here to Iron Man, do three damage, to him and then simply move to a different location and maybe he'll go right here just like that nice and simple and he's got the rest of these as well to use if he wants if he can this is a range attack so we can choose to maybe hit the hulk over here and that would actually swing him down to six points and then the next player is going to get to go as you see there's a ton of different abilities from all the characters which we'll talk about above but the hulk destroys a location if he gets these uh groundswell does five damage strike to all heroes and knocks them back down and um let's see what else this causes five damage burst in his location and this is the, the hulk may escape so that's actually really useful as well uh, in the book here, it's going to tell you basically what the special abilities are and how they function as well as the cards here, these, these things here have a ref references as well. For each PvP point that Iron Man spends, he can increase the damage done by his uh, range results by one point. He also has abilities like Elusive, Flight, and Tough. And if you go ahead and look on this side here, it tells you what they all do. Uh, careful, it requires four of these science in order for the hero to um, uh, basically take damage. Or maybe he's going to be honest. It requires four of these in order for him to be put into the Crystal Prison, and so on and so forth. So these are all be very beneficial effects, and each one of the heroes has something different. The play is going to continue in a circle as players move around the board, destroying other players, reducing them down to either zero health until there's one person left being the winner, or somebody manages to get all the way up to 21 victory points, and if that happens, they'll win the game as well. Fairly simple. That's basically how you play. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Okay, so a couple caveats. I said that the purple was while it's technically not true. It's actually one PvP point or health point, however you want to look at it, that's going to help you gain uh, HP staying you keeping you in the game not only that though but if you actually get kicked out of the game not only does your character go but also the character's location that he's currently on will go as well any other players that are on here will go ahead and move to an adjacent location of their choice and the game will continue just like that but overall that's basically how you play the game you're gonna be rolling dice like Yahtzee putting them on your different character boards or cards using those abilities to try and destroy your opponents some characters actually will survive being put down to one health other characters are gonna have special abilities let's go ahead and take a look at one of the characters here this one is Hawkeye. Hawkeye may add an additional range result to his roll. So an additional of six dice, he's going to get an additional range result. He's careful, elusive, and lucky. Or if we go ahead and look at Guillotine over here, he may knock back any or all of the heroes at her location before... She, sorry. May knock all heroes off her location before rolling dice. So that's pretty sweet. So she has the ability to start doing some range stuff. Or we can look at Thor over here. He can re-roll any of his mutants to science results. 
That's, uh, oh, sorry, reroll any these two results. Wow, that's awesome. So he doesn't actually get uh, put in prison. It's very hard for him to be put in prison. Or uh, what's this one? Civil Warrior. For each PDP point that Civil Warrior spends, increase the damage done by by his melee or his range results by one. Ooh, that's pretty cool as well. And of course, the character abilities. There's so many of them, so I can't even bother to get involved with all of them, but I'll give you a little taste of them. Uh, this one here is a Falcon. He's got Raptor Strike, which can move to another location. Uh, this one over here is Fading Barrage, does 3 damage uh, to all heroes in all other locations. Tango Down does a 3 damage blast to 2 different heroes at the same or different locations, and Exo 8 blocks 4 damage. Wow, so he can actually block damage until his next turn, that's pretty powerful. And uh, let's go ahead and pick another one randomly here. How about Ant-Man? Uh, Pym Gas Control. It makes Ant-Man immune to uh, ranged and melee strikes and blasts, but not bursts. And that kind of tells you in the rules what happens. Sometimes you can get knocked down and you can't get back up until the next player's turn. Other times you're going to get um, slammed or stunned and all that kind of stuff. So that stuff can happen as well. Each of the different locations is going to have different things on them. And there's so many. And as you saw, you only need a certain amount of them. If you get six players, you're only going to need seven of these total. And there is so many different locations. And they all have their own unique abilities, as well as PvP points you gain when you walk onto them. The Wakandan and Necropolis. Heroes in the Wakandan Necropolis are not eliminated when they are reduced to zero points as long as they remain there. So you actually cannot be killed in this location. That's pretty good. Hell's Kitchen. Uh, in Heroes in Hell Hell's Kitchen add an additional fight to their role. Or the Battle World Asteroid. Heroes in the Battle World Asteroid are not, uh, may not re-roll their dice. That's not very good at all. Uh, Crystal Vault. Heroes in the Crystal Vault may bid up to three PvP points and name a single die result, then roll a die. If it's the same result, they gain twice their bet, but if not, they lose their bet. So it has some little gambling involved in the game as well. So that's the basic idea of it. So what do I think about Contest of Champions Battle Realm? Well, first of all, if you like the Marvel style series and you enjoy the characters, you're going to enjoy this game. It basically has a feel of King of Tokyo and uh, Yahtzee like I was talking about. One of those style games. There's quite a few of them out there. This one does a few things differently as you move around locations, punching each other, avoiding getting stuck in the Crystal Prison, which can be nasty. You're not really playing on teams, but the same time you want to make sure that the player who's winning is kind of being put down to the same level so it works in various ways uh, that are similar to other games like it but what's really really cool is there's so many characters there's so many abilities you'll probably you'll never play the same game twice especially with how many different locations there are we played three four five and six players and it all works just fine you're rolling around it's kind of like random attacks and damages there are certain times when people will team up and go up against another player not all the time are you going to actually win by destroying everybody a lot of the time especially with a larger player game you're going to win by getting the most victory points and that can be attained either by the cards or by rolling these these little uh, purple die here and uh, other results on specific locations sometimes it'll give you bonus points as well and it's fairly simple you have a special a passive ability which is really cool with each of your characters and they all function based on how the character is seen to be done in the comics and the marvel movies but not only that you have special abilities that are super cool as well i really enjoyed the whole character full, cunning, elusive, flight, gifted, honest, lucky, peaceful, survivor, and tough. These are all the different uh, aspects, special abilities that can be on the characters, and each of them have three, and they all do something nice, something unique, and something beneficial that works for their character. I like that. It's themed very well. The dice rolling is fun. It can be kind of monotonous, like a King of Tokyo and that kind of stuff, so if you don't like games like King of Tokyo's Yahtzee style fighting games, it's probably not going to be one for you. If you don't like the Marvel Universe, the MCU, you probably will not like this as well, because it's fully themed as Marvel. If you enjoy Marvel though, if you like combat dice games, and if you enjoy a little bit of area control, location movement, and uh, dice management, tableau management, you'll probably like this game. It was enjoyable. I really do recommend this game, and if you think that it would be something you'd be interested in yourself checking out, go ahead and look in the description below for where you can pick it up.